Yet again, debunking this myth of TMAO once more. If anyone says they are a, quote, expert on TMAO, you know they are full of bullshit because there's so much evidence now suggesting that TMAO is not a problem for humans. There are so many lines of critical thinking here, yet this idea of TMAO gets repeated over and over and over. It's just like LDL and so many other things in Western medicine. There is a large group of physicians who just ignore the evidence with regard to TMAO. This is perhaps one of the more important papers, assessment of the causal direction between gut microbiota dependent metabolites. They're referring to TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, and cardiometabolic health, a bidirectional Mendelian randomization analysis. The uh, basic takeaway from this paper, they say our Mendelian randomization findings support that type 2 diabetes and kidney disease increase TMAO levels. We know that because when the kidneys don't work due to diabetes or intrinsic kidney disease, TMAO is retained in the human body. And observational evidence for cardiovascular diseases may be due to confounding or reverse causality. Reverse causality refers to a concern about which way the arrow of causation goes. Is it possible that TMAO is associated with cardiovascular disease because diabetes and kidney disease are associated with cardiovascular disease and they could raise TMAO, but TMAO was probably not causing cardiovascular disease. In fact, I think there's very little evidence that TMAO is in any way, shape or form negatively contributing to cardiovascular disease. And why would a substance that is made in the gut by certain bacteria formed from critical nutrients like carnitine and choline that are essential for brain function, hormones, libido, energy, testosterone, all these things, why would those be bad for you? I don't believe they are. Consider also this characterization of TMAO, the no effect of plasma trimethylamine and oxide TMAO and plasma trimethylysine on the association between choline intake and acute MI risk in patients with stable angina. Um, again, there's tons of evidence like this that we found that plasma TMAO and TML, trimethylysin, do not modify the association between higher dietary choline intake and increased AMI risk. Additionally, this association is not mediated via TMAO. I could go on, I've done whole podcasts on that. Suffice it to say that I have zero concerns that TMAO is harmful for humans and people who say otherwise would also love to debate them. It's pretty crazy. I can't believe people still worry about this. The last thing for you to consider with regard to TMAO is that there is more TMAO in many fish preformed than you would get from an equivalent amount of meat based on the choline and carnitine in the meat, but fish has never been associated with negative cardiovascular outcomes. I think studies that suggest that meat is associated with negative cardiovascular outcomes are uh, must be carefully considered for confounding and bias like healthy user, or in this case, non-healthy user or unhealthy user bias, which happens very often in these studies. Those are things I've talked about in previous podcasts as well. You can see here a metabolomic study of biomarkers of meat and fish intake. Anserine was found to be specific for chicken intake, whereas TMAO has a good specificity for fish, meaning that when you see high levels of TMAO in cohorts like this EPIC cohort, these people are eating a lot of fish. There is preformed TMAO in fish. Why do we not believe that fish is harming us? Probably because in general, fish is okay for humans. I do think it's full of a lot of toxins as I've spoken about in the past, but fish doesn't have any defense chemicals, just like meat or chicken or pork. But as I said earlier, chicken and pork are often fed corn and soy. They're monogastric animals. They accumulate linoleic acid in their cell membranes and in their fatty tissues. 